Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's open the textbook on page 31 and today's topic is the learning stage. At this stage you deliberately repeat the piece in a structured order, bringing all the tasks about imagination and intonation to inner sensation memory to muscle memory. Now, why do we need it? Firstly, to settle and improve all tasks about imagination and intonation, to make them solid and small in your mind, being able to easily and quickly tune into those tasks before playing, and keep focusing on them while playing. Secondly, to let all the sensations and muscle movements go deeper into subconscious, not to be overwhelmed with all the tasks to think about while playing and to make more space in your mind for creativity to play more effortless. This creativity we will explore in the next stage. Thirdly, to fully memorize the whole piece. By this time, a piece will be already almost in your mind, but not completely, not confidently. So by following the structure plan at this learning stage, solid memor memorization of this piece will come naturally with no effort. And lastly, following an efficient, structured plan of practicing this piece at this stage will help you to finish the piece quickly. And if you don't have a clear plan at this stage, then um, most probably you're going to end up wasting your time, overwhelming your hands, your nervous system, your emotions, and you, you will still be afraid to play in a real fast tempo the whole piece. So in the next video in the Piano Well Academy playlist, you will find very helpful tips on how to stay on track while practicing a piece at this stage. I really suggest you to watch it. Okay, so let's open page 32 and just follow the instructions in the textbook. So this is the order of tasks that we are going to practice at this stage. Tune into musical image, very important, this is very important. Tune into musical image, form, time, speak up about this through artistry, and um, if you practice more than one sentence, then make sure you have a clear map of musical form parts as well ahead of you. Imagine the first chords or notes in timbre, harmony, dynamics, voicing, movement. Gather weight, bring the hands to the keyboard, start playing, following the phrasing. So that's basically it. And by the end of practicing in the learning stage, you should, be, you should expect that all of these tasks will be very small, solid and effortless in your mind for you. So the first day, practice one sentence at a time, page 81, 97, repeating three times each sentence. The next day, practice two, three sentences at a time, pages 98, 106, repeating three times each block. The next day, practice five, six sentences at a time, pages 107, 111, repeating three times each block. And lastly, practice the whole piece, the last three pages, <laughs> repeating it three times. Now, I know that the best way to teach is by good example. So at the end of this video, you can watch the time lapse of my entire session of practicing at this stage. In between repetitions, you might want to fix some difficult parts to feel more comfortable. So let's open page 33 in the textbook and just follow the instructions. These are very helpful steps because if you don't know how to practice difficult parts efficiently, then you will never really fix those parts. And um, you will only accumulate fear about those parts, end up playing the whole piece and still feeling stuck in those parts. I've been there, I've done that, trust me. <laughs> so, um, let's say I don't feel comfortable in this... Um, in this descending passage. I mean, I feel comfortable, but I would like to improve the quality, let's say. So this is how I'm going to fix it. And I will explain first, and then I will show you everything and again in a time-lapse video. So I'm going to check if I need to make better elbow movement, maybe, 
on the circle notes, or sometimes I need to intonate musical speech in additional intervals. But um, here I think I will just fix the elbow better. And another important tip is to check your imagination because sometimes we'd get, we, we would get ghost notes or maybe too loud notes because in our imagination we have a blank note. So if you cannot control it in your imagination, you cannot control it outside of your imagination. <laughs> so um, after that, when it's fixed, I'm going to practice exactly this part, half of the bar, in a different tempos three times in a very slow tempo and three times in the original tempo. Then, when it's good by itself, you know, like when it's good locally, I'm going to start practicing it with, within a bigger part, learning backwards, because what is good by itself might not be good enough in the context of a larger block. So I'm going to play it from the previous bar, again, in a very slow tempo three times, in the original tempo three times. And then I'm going to go even further and start practicing from the previous sentence, repeating again three times in a very slow tempo and three times in the original tempo. So in other words, I find the problem, I fix it, I fix it locally, and then I try to fix it in a bigger uh, context of the piece. So this is how it looks like. And uh, I think first I will show you the final result in the normal tempo and then will be my practice routine on the time lapse. practice routine at this stage. Um, watching it in time-lapse might feel a bit strange, 
uh, when I try to wash it, I feel like a bit annoyed or something because everything is a bit jerky, you know, in a fast tempo. But at the same time, it's really worth it because somehow something happens in your mind. Um, you can clearly see, you can clearly understand how it should feel like practicing at this stage. So if you can bear those jerky motions, you can learn something really important here. So I suggest you to stick to this, you know, five, ten minutes and watch it. Okay, let's go and I'll see you in my next last video of this series.